so so yesterday uh, we have learned about a few of the HTML elements uh, and we know what are the form elements are available uh, and we saw uh, the input element is very much useful and there is an attribute of input element is called type and that type is having multiple values and by which you can create a different type of uh, uh, input elements so so we saw how we have used input type text and if I want to show you that this is an example of what we have uh, done yesterday right so we have used couple of input type text input type password checkbox and there was a question yesterday from Srabhya uh, we have not connected label and the uh, input element so yes we can connect that so label uh, there is attribute for label is for so for input we can have a attribute ID so whatever the ID we give over here we can give it a for so what's the benefit of connecting the label to the input is uh, the only benefit is if someone clicks on the username then also you can see the focus is coming over here but for the second code that's line number 15 and line number 16 here I'm not connected the label and input element so here if I click on the password element I'm clicking on the password element you can see the focus is not coming to the input box but when I'm clicking on the username the focus is coming to the input box so that's the feature of the for attribute uh, which is there for the label so it depends on the requirement so it's not always necessary you have to have for and you connect with your input element it based on the requirement if requirement says uh, I don't care if someone clicks on the username uh, he should not be uh, focused into the respective input box and you can remove that but the feature is like if someone clicks over here also the focus should go to the input box then you can connect those label at your input elements uh, with for and ID so the for you can see the same name is the user and I've given ID the same name is the user so that's the benefit of connecting your label element and input element uh, using for attribute so yesterday we have seen couple of uh, other way of uh, using those input elements how you can create a checkbox how uh, you can create a, a radio button uh, the drop downs everything we saw so yes so today uh, what we'll do we'll move now to uh, CSS so we'll learn few things on the CSS and then we'll go forward so uh, first question is what is CSS so as the full form says it's cascading style seat so means uh, there are multiple rules are there by which you can style your web page and those using those rules we write uh, the entire CSS file and so HTML provides the content and the structure to the page and CSS is a thing which style them so there are so many rules so to define those rules there are so many uh, properties and there are different values to those property like color is a property and if you and there are so many colors are there so those are the value of the property so every time in our CSS file we define the property and their value and this is the example how we uh, define a rule in dot CSS file or uh, you can say when I say body so there are multiple way you can uh, style your HTML you can style your HTML through elements you can style your HTML through classes you can style your HTML through IDs you can style your elements through multiple classes you can style your element through multiple IDs you can style your element through classes and ID combination okay Dilip is asking is HTML part is done yes HTML is done so HTML will come back again when I'll talk about HTML5 so that's a, a latest feature of HTML I'll talk about but in general uh, so the HTML is done. 
So, but if yeah. you have any question in HTML, you can ask any day, any time uh, during our session. Uh, I'll I'll be happy to uh, mm -hmm. answer your doubts. So, so CSS is the things which detect detects how your HTML will look. So CSS is nothing but it's a collection of rules uh, which we can apply to all the HTML elements. So you can see this is an example how you can can we get more number of exercises regarding HTML? Ravi is asking little complex. Okay, definitely. So I'll send you a few more complex examples. Sorry, exercises as well. On HTML, but when you go forward, uh, uh, we'll we'll get the complex HTML as well because when I will create uh, a end-to-end real-life ex uh, example after learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we're going to develop uh, a web page, and there the HTML will be complex. But yeah, I can send you a few more exercises as well. Yes, I'll send you. Okay, so because in general, without CSS and JavaScript, your HTML could not be that much complex. Uh, combining all three, you might see the things are uh, going complex. So, okay, so these are the basic one how you can uh, style your elements directly you just write your element name then the curly braces then you write a property and then the value of that property and in between there is a column so similar way we can apply uh, CSS with class and ID as well so HTML uh, and we saw yesterday how we can provide a class and ID uh, to identify a particular element and and you can see when you style using your class, you have to use dot, dot class name, and then the curly braces, then the property and value, so then the semicolon. That's how we write rules in CSS. And if you want to style an element through ID, then you have to use hash. So this is a corresponding HTML. Here you can see we are having a class and ID. And based on that class and ID, I can style those elements so it's pretty straightforward so you can so when I say you can style through a directly element so when I say h1 font size 50 pixel so all the h1s whatever there in your HTML file everything will get a font size 50 pixel let's say I don't want that I want only one h1 has to be a size of 50 pixel and rest all h1 will be their default size so to achieve that we have to use classes and to more complex if I just want that particular element should get some CSS rule not all other elements then we go for the IDs even more complex then we'll have a combination of class combination of ID and classes combination of element ID and classes a lot of things can be possible we'll see that okay so just a simple example uh, if I have to do then oh, okay so this is so if I write a multiple h1 one more h1 saying hello hello HTML and if I go to my CSS file and if I just say h1 and color is blue and I'll say so like this you can specify multiple uh, properties and value font size is 50 pixel you can see both looks blue and both font size 50 pixel but I don't want that I just want hello CSS you are awesome should apply that class uh, the others should not then I can introduce a CSS so I can say class equal to this is my 
class is CSS info I mean, that's what I can give a name then I can come over here and instead of this what I can say okay I want color pool blue for both but font size I only want for that and I'll remove this from here and I'll just say CSS dash info like this so with this both the h1 will be applying blue color but my only element where the class name is the CSS info will have a font size 50 pixel and the other h1 will be normal so that's how we uh, you can style different elements uh, based on that and if I I will have one more div, let's say an example, and in that div let's say it's there hello JS. Okay, I want this hello JS also has to be uh, blue color. Then how I'll do this? I can just write a comma and I just write it. You can see now our div also in blue color. So this is where you can write commas and you can write multiple elements or classes. I can write something like this also. Like let's say I have one more paragraph, and that paragraph is having some class saying para, and here I'm saying web is cool I want that also to be in blue color then what I'll do just comma I'll say dot para dot para you can see all are now blue so like this if some common properties are there then you can make it comma separated even you can mention over there and you can write it and after this if I'll write again para and here oops sorry because of some plunker issue uh, uh, it's been gone uh, I will not get it back again and maybe I'll try to repeat that So what was there? We are having one more H1 where I'm saying hello HTML. I was having one more div where I'm saying hello JS. I was having one more P. Where I was saying we is cool and here I was having a class called uh, then I can specify h1 comma div comma dot para everything is color blue right okay so I'm saying all div everything has to be color blue let's say I'll word add one more div where I'll say hello checks okay and let's say this particular oh my god so somehow this plunker is crashing so we'll move back to here. I'll show that example a bit later. We'll, we'll learn a few more properties, then we'll go back and I'll show you what I wanted to do. Okay, so color we got to know. Uh, there are a few uh, CSS properties uh, which uh, is there specific to text properties. So you can uh, apply rules on those texts like color. So you can color change the color of the text. Same in a way, there is something called font weight by which you can change the text from your normal font to bold font then there is something called the font style which changes the text style like normal italic those 
then there is something called text align by which you can align your text you want to left right center that you can then there is something called font size which changes the text size font weight is change the weight of the font font size is change the size of the font and then there is something called text decoration by which you can put underline overline line throw these are things so these are the few common properties which use to uh, style your text properties okay and we'll just show a quick example on that all together I'll show you what I wanted to show before So what I what I'll do I'll remove the auto refresh because auto refresh only it was crashing. So we'll reload it whenever it's required. So let's say I'll copy this guy again. And here I'll say hello HTML you awesome and what's there let's say I style first h1 as a color blue so obviously it will come both the h1 is blue and then I'll style h1 again with color orange This time I'll not do H1. I'll just apply. Uh, I'll just next one. I'll just say class. I'll say class name is header. And here I'll just say dot header. So what will happen now? You can see. So for both the things, I'm up. I'm trying to apply to different colors. So what will happen? The latest one will take effect. So here something went wrong, went wrong. I think some issues with the plunker today. We'll try the code page. Okay, so here I'll give a class saying header. Okay, so first I am trying to put some rules on H1 where I'm saying your color is blue. And then I'm trying to put one more thing where I'll say font size is 50 pixel. And then I am having one more class that's I'm styling the element where my header is there and there I'm trying to do color is orange so you can see what's happening uh, so by, from h1 there are two properties are there and both get applied to both the h1 and the second h1 I say class is header so what is happening the, the next one the header so this line number three now this element has been styled through h1 rules and through class header also so if you are using the same property in both the thing so whatever there at the last so this guy is there at the end right so that will be get overridden by the previous one so here color is blue there then again I'm saying color is orange so that is getting overridden over here so that's how uh, your CSS rule so whichever comes at the end that's get overridden by the previous one so if I write once more uh, the header 
same thing and I'll write some other color then that also will get okay apart from that if I move this over here so I'll now apply this first then also is coming orange then whatever I have told that's gone wrong right okay so then comes the priority priority so there are some priority had been defined in CSS rule so whatever so the priority says if you have style some element through class that will have more priority than if you are styling some element through element name so this color I am style I am trying to style through h1 element and this color or inch I'm trying to apply through class so class is having more weightage than element one that's why that's getting overridden and still orange color is there let's say I'll introduce one more thing that's called ID and here I'll give a ID name as JS and here I'll just add hash JS and I'll just say color is red you can see now red is coming so again so if you are styling any element through ID that will have more weightage than your class styling than your element style so that's why although this class I have defined later in my CSS file but still it maintains red color because if you're trying to style any of your elements through ID that will have more weightage than any other thing okay so if you want more weightage than this also now you have to club I can say something like this Sorry, I think I don't have to give space. Now you can see. So now this guy has more weightage because it's a combination of ID and element. So that's even have more weightage than color red because that's only through ID and color brown is through a two combination. That's your ID as well as element. So this is how now you can determine how complex you can write your rules to get a place so I can write a rules like this also dash dot header so this will now have even super uh, weightage because it comes with your ID element class everything right so this is how the CSS file determine the uh, what you can say the priority which rules has to be applied how it has been defined so that's matter so when you're debugging anything and you're screwing your uh, head how it's coming brown color I have just mentioned h1 is because it might not be on the same page because you can have huge CSS file which is having some 5000 lines of code 500 CSS rules and this might be there somewhere at the bottom and this is there somewhere at the top that's an example and then you might be thinking how I have mentioned here blue how this is coming as brown so means somewhere more weightage CSS rules has been applied that's why that's getting applied and that's overriding so how so this is how it works so it, it applicable for all the properties not only the color so you can write any of the properties so like font size is there right this also can be overridden so if I write a font size over here something and I'll just say 20 pixel then it will go small you can see hello JS your awesome is now 20 pixel size All right so this is what priorities of applying your CSS rules okay so there are now there are few things how we uh, measure our CSS so now we, we keep on I'm saying 50 pixel 50 pixel what this pixel is so most of the scenarios you will find uh, we are measuring the CSS in either pixel that in short we say PX or EM so this both has been used to measure the size of the elements in HTML 
So px pixel means it's a size of the element in HTML. That's what I'm talking. Em also is equivalent to same. So what's the difference between px and em? px denotes for pixel, and we know when we buy purchase a mobile, right? It says this mobile is this much pixel width, width this width this much this much. Pixel. And that's what they say, right? So that's what the pixel is because the screen has been measured in a small pixel and that's what the 50 pixel means. So when I say 50 pixel means that font size is 50 pixel. Okay, and what is EM? So EM is basically one EM is equal to the current font size of the element. So by default, if you don't define any of the pixel, by default, the every element will have some basic pixel size. H1 will have some its own pixel size, paragraph will have its own pixel, and H2 will have its own pixel. Everything will have its own pixel size. So EM is equal to the current font size of the element. So if so it would be the browser default if not set. You can set it, you can set the default also, but if it's not set, it will be a browser default. And from there you can see how big, how small you want. So if I say font size is 1.5 EM, that means from the original size, let's say original size is 20 pixel, when I say 1.5 EM means I want my font size of that element to be 30 pixel, right? 1.5. So if I say 2 EM means I want a double of its original size. So one EM means its original size and from there you want to increase or decrease this is 0 0.5 EM or 1.5 EM, 2 EM means from the original size it will recalculate and it will apply that font size to that element. So this is the two, there are few others also there but don't worry about that but these are the two majorly used measurement thing to define the font size of element in CSS. Okay, so that's all about the measurement. Then there is something I want to talk about CSS box. What is CSS box? Okay, so every element works as a box. So if you want to see that, whether I'm right or wrong, when I say every element works as a box, okay, I can do an inspect. You can see when I'm highlighting this guy, you can see this is coming as a box, right? You can see that. When I'm highlighting this body, H1, you can see it's coming as a box where uh, in between there is some text is there, then there is some other shared color is there, but it looks like a box. And when you go down, you can see here some boxes there. It says this is what its width and height is. This is padding border. I'll talk about more what's a padding, what's a border, what's a margin, but that's how it is. But ideally, it's a box. The box will have two majorly two things one is width, one is height. So every element will be represented in a box format. Okay, and that box will have some width and some height. If you go over here, you can see this is when I stop it. So you can see it says 43.4.4 into 36. Mm -hmm. So 43.4 is nothing but it's a width and 36.8 is nothing but it's a height. You can see the width is more because you can see it's, it looks longer. When I say hello plunker, it's goes till end of the view and height is that 36 36 so this all is in pixel so this is 44 34 pixel into 36 pixel so that's that we call as a css box so that is and it will have a border also so border is nothing but a border around box how big are the border you want <clears throat> so in border you can decide what will be your border width, what will be your border style. Border style means you want a dotted border, you want a solid border, those are the things you can decide. And then the color of the border. So this is how we specify the rules. 
I have to say border, then I specify three elements. The first one will be border width, I'll say one pixel. Then I'll say border style, I can say dotted or solid. And then the color, I can either give you the hex code or the color name. So it's always better to give a hex code because hex code will have more variation. If I say just black, it will be black. But a black can be more dark black, lesser dark black. Gray could have so many gray variation, but that variation you can achieve when you use hex code, not just gray. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how you can uh, decide your border. Okay, so if I have to talk you what is a border here when I choose this hello plunker. So here you can see there is no border. This border is dash, means the border has not been defined. So if you want to define border, you can define a border for this. So what I have to just say, I have to go here, I just have to say H1 and I just say border, border, one pixel, solid, blue. Okay, then I have to reload this guy. You can see a border now uh, around Hello Planker. So that's all border how you can define. And then if I say background color over here. And I have to reload this because I have turned off auto refresh. Then it will just give the background color for that box. It doesn't make the entire page as red color because it works as a box model. CSS works as a block model. So CSS is a bit complex to understand compared to HTML because it's very tricky. And a lot of people face problem in CSS only. They, they might be good in JavaScript, they can be good in HTML, but a lot of developers struggle in CSS only because CSS is bit complex when you will have a lot of properties, a lot of elements, and you have to style everything differently because nowadays uh, the, 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 the requirement are so complex because each of the customer want their page to look very beautiful. It can do so many things. And believe me, those all beautiful things achieved by CSS on. Mm -hmm. So that's why the CSS is becoming more complex nowadays. So it's very, very important to understand the basic how it works. Okay, so that's how your background color works. And then we'll go back to our slide. Background, so there is something called background image which accept the image URL by which you can set any of the image as your background image. That also works as a box model only. So if I have to apply background red for entire page, then I have to style the body element. Directly I have to say body and background red. So in the body is nothing but your entire view. At that, at that time your entire view will be your uh, red color. Okay, so then something come padding and margin. What is a padding and what is margin? Okay, we'll go back to here. Okay, here I didn't mention something. You can either specify border like this or you can specify like this also saying border width. Okay, I'll not change anything over here. I you can say border width equal to 2 pixel you can say border style equal to dotted you can say border color equal to black so this is also this is the way also you can fix that but the line number two is a more uh, 
advanced way of specifying your border because you just say border then you say the first is for width second is style third is color but if you are not if you're not comfortable with that you can individually say also border width is this border style is this border color is this so both are fine anything you are comfortable with okay and you can see the i have mentioned border width here also border width there also it's pretty much valid in css so what will happen the first line number 2 will be get overridden by 3 4 and 5 so when i'll try to reload this then 3 4 5 will get applied uh, over 2 because 3 4 5 comes after line number 2 you can see now i'm seeing a dotted black border but at line number two say it should be solid blue but that's get overridden by our line number three four five so that's pretty much valid in css so it, it's 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 not stopping you to style the same parameter or property twice thrice as many times as you want okay so then comes the margin and padding what is margin what is padding Okay, so I'll explain that. So you can see here something now border we got. So there is a space between your actual width and height. So this actual width and height is nothing but your text. Okay. Now that's hello plunker. So from there you are having a border. So in between there is a space. So that space is called padding. So your actual contain container whatever your contained is there that contained and then the border of that element so there is a space between in that two that's called padding here there is not no padding has been set so if you want to set any padding let's say I'll set a padding I'll say padding top and I'll just say padding top is 10 pixel and I'll reload this guy You can see now I'm seeing some space between hello plunker and the top border because I've given a padding top as 10 pixel. So that's how you can give a padding left, you can give padding right, you can give padding bottom. Okay, either you can specify like this or you can. So I can say padding top is 10 pixel, similar way I can say padding POTT bottom is. 5 pixel, I can say padding right is 15 pixel, padding left is 20 pixel. Okay, I'll just reload this guy. You can see now a different padding we are seeing when I'll go and inspect you can see this padding values has come up over here and this is how you can debug also you don't like uh, the padding 20 pixel it looks too big then you can reduce it and make it a 5 only and that will get reflect okay you're happy with this then you can come over and you can change your actual CSS so this is helpful for debugging what you have to do you just right click inspect go to the computer section it just highlights Okay, padding 10, here padding 5, it doesn't look good, you want both to be same, just go over, change your file. Okay, that's fine. Padding right doesn't make, you can see this is a padding right, you can see 15 pixel a difference is there. You want that also to be 5 to have consistency, you can just say 5. So now all are padding 5, you can see. So a space between your border and your actual thing is called padding. Now what is margin? So margin is like... The space between two different elements is called margin. So currently there is only one element. Uh, okay, so any other element will come. So the first margin is taking from the top of your view. And you can see some spaces in. So if you add one more element, then it will start get from here. Because you have some default 21 pixel margin is there. And that's default because of H1. So by default, your browser is giving some 21 pixel of margin uh, to this H1. And that's why you're getting some 21 pixel of margin. So let's say if I go ahead and add one more div over here. And I just say here, hello CSS. 
I will just reload this guy. And when I go and inspect, you can see that hello CSS comes and there are some space. Uh, it has leave left and then hello CSS got printed. So that is nothing but 21 pixel margin is there. Let's say I don't want any margin between these two. So I can come over here and I'll see, I'll make it zero and I'll see how it looks. Okay. Let's say you want like this. Then you can set the margin. So I have set a margin bottom as a zero pixel. So now you can see it's almost uh, starting without leaving any space after that. So if you're seeing any space after hello, that's because of your uh, border and margin, not uh, sorry, border and padding. So, so in simple word, what is a padding? What is a margin? Okay, first your actual space, that's your width and height of your element. Then comes padding. Padding is nothing but a space between your border and your actual content. Our content is hello blanker. So a space between that is called padding. And margin is a space between two consecutive elements. Or if it's a first element, then a space between your uh, the viewport and then that element. That's called margin. So margin generally a space between two different elements or a space between the width of our view, I mean the edges of your view and your element. So that's called margin. And this is all you can set based on your need, how you want to design your web page. Based on the requirement, you want to uh, set margin 100 pixel, 10 pixel, 50 pixel, you want to set padding. Everything can be done. And here if you see uh, the CSS, uh, we saw how we specify padding top, bottom, right, left. Uh, you can specify the other way also. I'll just give you one more easy way of specifying. You can specify something like this also. You can see, uh, I'm saying padding 0, 1.5 EM. Okay, you can set in pixel, you can set in EM also. I'm saying 0, 1.5 EM, 0, 1.5. So how it start? So you have to go a clockwise thing. Okay, so let me just explain over here. So how you can set, let's say I want to set something for here. So instead of this guy, I can just write one simple thing saying padding five pixel. If I just write like this, means all top, bottom, left, right, everything will be five pixel. Let's say you want to provide different values. I have to say five pixel, 10 pixel, 15 pixel. 20 pixels. I'm just giving different values so that you can understand how this works. I'll just reload this guy. Okay, I'll just inspect. You can see how it work how it's working. So so it starts 5, 10, 15, 20. So it's it goes as a clockwise. So your first is top, that's 5, then is your right, that's 10 pixel, then your bottom, that's 15 pixel, then your left, that's 20 pixel. So it starts from the top and go as a clockwise. You can specify like this also, 5, 10, 15, 20, or you can specify directly saying padding top, padding bottom, padding left, right, or whatever you are comfortable. So these are two ways you can specify. Some places you might see it has been written like this, just two values. You might see uh, some some places, some one might have written like this. So what does that mean? So this means my top and bottom will be five pixel, my left and right will be ten pixel. So two value means I am same value for top and bottom, same value for my left and right. So you can see that the same value five pixel for top and bottom. 10 pixel from for left and right. So the, these are the multiple ways how you can specify padding and the same way how you do padding, same way you can say margin also, you can say margin top, margin bottom, margin left and right or you can say margin and you can define all your pixels of one after another and it will be starting from top it will be clockwise. Okay so that's all about uh, uh, 
padding and margin and believe me lot of developers only confused of when to set padding when to set margin how to set it so that's the confusion uh, most of the developers is having uh, so, so it's 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 very critical to understand how these things work one is your width and height other is your padding border and margin these four are the things which decide your layout of most of the elements okay so one more thing i just missed i wanted to show you guys so here i can specify a width and height also i can say width is has to be uh, 100 pixel and height has to be 50 pixel and I just reload and you can see uh, this box is very small and this plunker is getting out so what I'll do I'll just increase the width I'll just make it 200 pixel and I'll reload this Okay, still no, so I'll make it 250 or we'll make it 300. Reload this. So if your CSS doesn't get space, then it will <coughs> flow out. I'll show you how to solve that. So now I've given three pixel and when I inspect it, you can see this 350 whatever I've given, that's actually the size of your content. The content is Hello Plunker. So that contain for that content I'm giving width and height. Uh, apart from that, there are padding is there. Apart from that, there are uh, water is there, and apart from that, there is margin is there. So this width and height directly go to the content. And if that content is not able to fit, sorry, if the width and height whatever I'm specifying is is not able to fit your text, then it goes overflow. So whatever we have shown before. When I give with just 200 pixel, the hello plunker was not coming in entire box. It was getting overflow. So those all things we can control. And how we control? I'll show you. So there is something called CSS box sizing. This is also very critical. Does it take the width and height by default as padding? No. That's what. Uh, so Shravya has asked that, and I just showed you that width and height you can specify by default if you just say h1 there are some default width and height is uh, there which has been set by your browser but you can override that uh, by saying what width and height you want but for each of the element there are some default which has been set by your browser okay so apart from that one more critical uh, CSS property is there that's called box sizing what this box sizing is so box sizing property in CSS control so how the box model is handled for the element so we have seen the box model as of now and we are seeing how we can give width height padding margin and border sorry padding border and margin so there is something called there are four values to the box sizing one is border box, one is padding box, one is content box. And what's the difference between that? When I'll come to this page and when I go to the styles, when you go to the computed style, you can see all the computed styles are there. Okay. And so there is something I am doing content box. So let's say I'll specify a box sizing over here. Let's say I'll say box sizing. So if I say box sizing is content box, that's what uh, the value of box size is what difference it's making so I just uh, refresh this page again okay. 
manual inspect you can see when I say content box it's still the same I am giving width and height 350 I am still seeing 300 into 55 everything is as well what I have given over here I have not set any margin but we can set some margin as well margin is like let's say we will set a 20 pixel a flat margin for all the things I'm just removing uh, this all border because border we have set like this before. Solid. Okay, I just reload this guy. Okay, so when I inspect, cool, everything has been set. Okay, when I say one pixel, uh, I think browser is considering is 0 0.8. I, I'm not sure what's the logic behind that, but uh, yeah, I will find it out. Okay, but uh, the intention what I want to show when I say content box, that means the width and width what I'm giving that will be applicable to your content on this. So that's why the content is having 300 and people. But there is one more value which is border box. So if I say box sizing is border box, you can see what the difference now will happen. Now you can see my width and height is having some different value. It's saying 278.4. Okay. And why it's saying 278.4? because when I say box sizing equal to border box now it considered the width and height by adding its actual width and height plus the padding plus the border including everything now the width should be 300 pixel <coughs> and the height should be 50 pixel and if you compute you can compute like this you can say 27.4 plus 5 sorry 38.4 I'm computing height now 5 top padding 5 bottom padding so it makes it 48.4 and 0 0.8 border 0 0.8 border 1.6 30 48.4 plus 1.6 is 50 similar way if you compute the width you have to compute the border left padding left the actual width padding right and border right including everything it has to be 300 pixel so that's the difference between a box sizing so by default your box sizing will be yep I'll repeat the box sizing once again so by default your box sizing will be contained box and box sizing is a property which decides which decides how your CSS will control the box model so box sizing is a property which decides how your CSS will control the box model. Okay, so pretty cool. So by default, it is content box. When I say content box, whatever you can see now, I am saying content box, and I'll just reload this. When I say content box. And when I'll inspect this element, you can see the width and height it's showing over here is the actual width and height what I have given. I have given width as 300 pixel, height as 50 pixel. That's what is given. Apart from that, this box is having some padding. This box is having some margin. Correct? Uh, sorry, some border and then some margin. Cool. But it's the content is having a width of 30 pixel and height of but when I say border box means I am saying the width of the box the width and height of the box will be 300 pixel including the padding at border when I say border box and I just reload I am now what I am saying I am saying my width of the box should be 300 pixel correct including the padding and water 
my height of the box should be 50 pixel by including the border and padding so that's why when you can see now the actual content the width of and height of the content is 278 and 38 because the width of the box is now calculated by considering the padding as well as border when I say the box sizing properties for the box is it clear yes so now you sum to now you can sum it it will come 50 0 0.8 uh, to sum the width you have to say yes it's clear so 0 0.8 plus 10 then 38 plus 10 plus 0 .7. same way the width now there is one more value to this box sizing that's called padding box okay so the padding box now it must be clear auto clear for you guys so when i say padding box it will just add the padding not the model so now your width and height is computed including your padding now when i say inspect you can see oh, oh this padding guy is not working i don't know why did the padding should work in that way i'm not mm -hmm. sure why this padding box is working as similar to content box I'll, I'll see this and find it out but padding box is used very less uh, people either use uh, the border box or the content box these are the two widely used values for box sizing uh, I'm not sure why uh, the, this guy is not good. oh this box sizing padding <laughs> box is actually not a correct value I'll find out what's the correct value so here you can find out what's the correct values of that when you say contained box I can oh sorry when I say box sizing okay so I think with the latest browser they have removed this padding box that's why it's not working so I thought it's still there so padding box is no more a valid value so this is also one good thing so you can directly come to the core uh, sorry the chrome debugging tool and if you're not sure about the values of uh, each of the properties what all the values that properties can take then you can just type it over here you can say box sizing and you can just highlight that and you can see the values and border box contain what inherit and each other. inherit means uh, whatever uh, the your parent element will have box sizing the same will be applied to chai that's i inherit initial means a default the default box sizing so that is nothing but your content box so these are the four values so i can directly say border box and now it will work as a border box and for anything you can see let's say you want to see for color i'll just type color and you see that you can see all the color names are coming over here you can see that yeah so now the color got applied so let's say for this if i check font weight you can see the values are coming 100 200 300 800 if you say 800 it will be having more weightage similar way if i want to say font style you can say inherit italic normal oblique you can see oblique how it looks yeah so this is how you can test your things over here and if you are liking this then you just copy this guy and paste it in your CSS and will work. So this debugging tool helps in that way also. You can directly come over here and apply some styles. Uh, you can apply everything how you march in, padding everything here. Here only you can type and keep on experimenting. Uh, whatever you like you can just copy that style and to your CSS file and make it. So this is a good way rather than keep on changing value in CSS, loading your HTML, keep on changing your CSS, directly come over here and put apply some. Let's say I want, let's say padding top, I uh, want padding top 20 pixel. Uh, uh, it doesn't look good. I mean, that's how we debug. I like it 10 pixel. Oh, yeah, it looks good. So we'll make it fine. This is how it works in actual uh, development.
Okay, uh, I'll go back to our slide and see what the rest is pending. Okay, so there is some one more properties there that's overflow. I'll just take uh, five to ten minutes more um, before winding up. We started late, so I think it should be okay, guys, right? Yes? Okay, cool. Uh, so just give me a moment. Uh, uh, my computer is running out of power. Just one. Okay, so there is uh, one more CSS property is there that's overflow and what this overflow does, uh, this overflow property controls what happens to the content of that element. Uh, if that breaks out of its bound and we have seen that right when I have seen a set of width as a 200 pixel are contained that's hello plunker was going out of the box right so we'll see how this guy works now so let's say i'll set my width as 200 pixel now you can see this plunker went out right to control that what I can do, I can add a property overflow and you can see there are so many values of overflow I'll make overflow scroll now you can see I got a scroll scroller over here and I can scroll it and I can see cool so this is how overflow scroll works I don't like scroll I'll say overflow visible means your, your overflow will be there let's say I want overflow auto auto also suggesting you need a scroller right but the auto what it does it doesn't give me uh, the horizontal scroll it only gives vertical scroll because auto understand here we don't need the horizontal scroll but when I specifically scroll scroll it gives me both the horizontal and the vertical but horizontal scroller I'm not getting because this is not very bigger so that I'll get the horizontal thing but if I want I can make it horizontal also so you can directly change your HTML content over there I'll say hello Lankar you are good Now you can see, hello Plunker, you're good, but still uh, we, we don't need a horizontal uh, scroller. Okay. I'll remove this, you're good. Because Plunker sometimes crashes. Okay. Then there is some value is called Excuse me. Overlay. This also give me the same scholar. Excuse me for that. So these are the different values for how you can control the things. Inherit is just, it inherits from its parent. So there is the parent will be now a default. So this is how you can control how you 
want your overflow to be handled okay but if I don't set any height you can see if I don't set any height then it manage automatically when I see overflow visible you can see it manages and the box height is not now 50, 50 pixel and it's now auto calculated now as you can see 73 pixel so based on how much space it needs it can decide what a width of this element will be because I'm not forcing as so what the height of the element will be because I'm not forcing the any height and I have mentioned overflow as visible so that's how uh, we can control over the things okay so that's what your overflow property does you can decide how you want visible hidden scroll auto everything okay okay so this part I'll not cover today because this again need uh, so much uh, discussion on this uh, I need so I'll be not specifying this now I'll talk about this uh, position property uh, on my next session uh, this position property also very critical and most of the developer uh, make mistake over here to set what should be a position I should have a position static relative if I set a position static what should be my padding what should be margin because this padding margin is very much related how you decide your position is it's very much dependent with the same padding and margin if you set a different position value your element will change its position so this I'll talk on my next session so for now you can digest this thing so few other things what we have learned what is uh, one critical thing we have learned the CSS measurement and the next thing which we learn is a width height padding border margin how it works and then how it relate with a content box and then how we can control the overflow okay with this uh, that's uh, end of my session I'll just give you one more uh, exercise which you guys can do I'll just show you that exercise quickly So uh, okay, the exercise is pretty simple. It's just say apply styles to exercise one, two A and two B. So all of the exercise what I have given uh, on my uh, first session and on my second session, uh, the two exercise two A two B, you just apply styles to them. So that's one exercise, and there is one more exercise which is there. So you can see. Uh, this exercise so here I am saying so I've given some uh, HTML you can see over here I have, I've written some HTML over here so style the below HTML with CSS so that page will look like this okay so the job is pretty simple I've given you already an HTML there is no style is there here there is not a single style has been applied over here so I want you guys to style this HTML in such a way so that it will look like this. Look like this below image what I've given. Limits. So if I just render this, I'm just I'll show you how it will look without the styles. You can see without style how it looks like all images are here and there. Okay, everything is there, but it nothing looks it not looks like how I want it. So you have to style it in such a way so that it will look like this image what I'm showing over here. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's with that uh, I'm done with my session today. So see you guys on my next session.
Thank you all for joining. Bye bye. If you have any question, can we get the mail immediately? Okay, I'll talk with my team and I'll send you. I'll tell them to send you the mail immediately. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll inform them. So hopefully they will do that. Okay. Anything else? Question? Sravya, Dilip, anything else? Okay, cool. Then bye for the days. Bye for today. See you guys on my next session. How can we send out the yeah, so you send to the same guy who is sending you uh, the mail, the exercises, you reply on top of that, I'll get it back, my team will send it to you. Yeah, Pamsi Krishna is the right person, correct. Okay, bye then.